and I'm off campus. I wandered over to a friend's property because um, I'm going to be involved in salesmanship. And so, this is uh, a Mullergate bed bow. I have, gosh, my paddle bow, of course, but I like this for a whole different reason. Um, not only for the fact that, you know, these are decent bows with uh, good performance. This one is approximately 55 pounds at 28 inches of draw. Um, and I was able to flight shoot um, 180 yards, 180, 183. So, you know, for a 55 pound bow at 28 inches, uh, shooting 180 yards, that's pretty good. I had a couple mile an hour tailwind. It was a very slight breeze, um, but I think it offsets it because the arrow was not spined whatsoever for this. Uh, made for a much different bow um, weight, and so it fishtailed like crazy. So I think that the fishtailing offset. Anyway, um, features of the this style are um, needle-like tips, non-bending, and this is rawhide backed. I'm just going to talk about the bow before I start talking about this stuff. And I go a step further, it's, it's really hard to see, is that I round this out to reduce a little bit of weight. And plus it looks cool to have like a, a rounded channel through here. It is red oak, red oak board bow. And uh, okay, so now on to this. I like to ponder things a lot. Um, you watch my videos, you see I kind of go around in circles. And even though my points might be hard to explain, I do have points and things. And so, going back, is that because this is um, a, a variation on it, it, ancient European style um, that was found in, in uh, Denmark, what I have written on here in these panels, and I'm going to keep going into depth in this oh, on different levels, is as a saying, from the mysteries of the past um, returns my companion. I tr translated that English into Old Norse and then um, wrote it in this language of ruins, Elder Futhark, actually. And so, um, the Elder Futhark, um, regardless of like your philosophical and spiritual beliefs, it is a written language that has many levels. On the surface, like the N and the T and the R, you know, and the M, it is simply an alphabet. Um, arranged in, tw there's 24, arranged in three rows. And um, when, you, when you get into it, not only are these just letters of the alphabet, they also have meanings according to the shapes. And, and so you can get into that. I'm not gonna go into the whole um, thing on, you know, the shape and the meaning and the different levels of language, a written language, which, you know, corresponds to like different levels of thought. And so I'm not pushing, you know, any religion on anybody. It's merely um, thinking about stuff, which is important. Okay, a bow stave. It's made from a bow stave. Yeah, it was a board, bah, whatever. Um, these panels, these two panels, represent rune staves, and they were pieces of water, bone, what have you, where the, the, the language is written on there. And uh, it, it could have been just, you know, nailed to the side of your um, house or, or what have you. These are rune staves. And what I did was, this is rawhide backed, and uh, deer rawhide. And instead of like trimming it like I do, you can see I, I trimmed it first and then applied it. And so I've got like overlap here. I didn't go crazy on sanding it down so it just disappears into here. I wanted to be able to see the rawhide. And Everything matches up. I was very careful on centering it so it's not like big overlap here and no overlap here. It's very centered. I took it and I dyed it black cherry, which um, in, in my artistic bet would represent like blood, life, you know, and, and death, the whole big circle. And so this is dyed in red. Um, even this uh, buckskin handle wrap, which is like the natural color and dyed. Um, an X pattern, which X's have symbolism too. And so I have, and I didn't sign it, you know, there's no John signature there. I signed it right there with um, my Boyer's mark.
on both sides, which happens to be um, bind runes. And that is about it, I guess. As far as the art of the bow, you know, I have, I, I get challenged and, and get into these great discussions, um, which is appreciated because you don't want to just hear, yeah, there you go, good job, good job, and then simply, I like discussing things with people. And as far as the artistic nature, the art of the bow, there's room for different variations. Of course, the art of the bow um, is taking a stave, cut down that tree, and then figuring out the grain and the lay of it and artistically building a bow out of it. But there's room also for like um, these non-stave made bows, although wood is wood, um, expressing yourself with the symbolism and the painting and stuff like that. You know, there's, there's the art of the bow in traditional archery with laminations and beautiful recurves. There's room for everything, so um, I'm not saying this is the only way to do an art of the bow. There's room for all of us here. This just happens to be mine. And yes, this is for sale, and that's why I'm off campus right now. Um, propriety, don't you know? And let's see here. How I tillered this thing is I don't have, as you can see, the bend starts more into here because I wanted to get more of the bend concentrated out to take advantage of these levers. And so, it's a very long arrow. I guess I should, like, shoot it. There we go. So you can see it actually works. Anyway, um, I shall be asking... Well, anyway, between $100 and $2, I've got a definite figure in mind. Um, so email me, johnjriggsarchery at gmail.com, and we can set that up if you do want to um, include this in your collection. Thank you very much, and have a great day.